Okay, well, these uh, the calculation of the datum correction turns out to be pretty simple. We've uh, we spent a good bit of time just kind of conceptualizing the problem, and um, we pointed out that the information that we use in order to make these corrections comes from, especially for the uh, low-velocity interfa interface there with the bedrock, uh, comes from refraction data. There are some assumptions that are made. We know that there is, uh, you know, some potential errors inherent in this uh, process. So we've gone through that. We've described the uh, potential limitations of the process. And uh, also note that we've been talking about this as a static correction. Uh, often in the processing work workflow, this is referred to as a datum correction. And, um, you know, datum is a little bit less uh, descriptive, but effectively that's what we're doing is we're taking the sources and the receivers and we're putting them down on the datum. Uh, however, the static is the effect. And uh, that term is a little bit more descriptive of what happens to the deeper reflectors uh, that come through this uh, near surface lens. Uh, we have uh, time structure superimposed on the deeper layers that is, uh, you know, it's a false uh, false structure, it's a spurious structure, a structure that's not actually there and could, mis could be misleading to the interpreter. So, so with uh, that in mind then, we're dealing with a two-step approach, remember. Uh, we start by removing the uh, LVL, and that means that we've basically replaced uh, everything in the LVL with uh, a medium that has a velocity v1 so that we can think of uh, everything from the datum to the surface as having a velocity v1 and then we get rid of the topography. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the uh, weathered layer replacement and um, as I mentioned you know this turns out to be very simple. Uh, we've got the thickness of this layer, we've got our velocity here from our refraction survey and uh, we also have this velocity, V1, from the refraction survey. Those are the velocities that we're using. We know that in the real world, the actual travel time, uh, you know, assuming that we have the thickness correct and the velocity correct from our survey, is just going to be this uh, thickness of the weathered, uh, we weathered interval divided by the velocity of the um, uh, the weathering uh, zone, and uh, that's our delta T actual, and then over here we have the desired case. This is, uh, again, we're using the same thickness, uh, however, we're replacing the weathering velocity with the velocity V1. That's the velocity of the uh, bedrock. So, <clears throat> we're trying to develop a case here. We're determining what the, what the travel time would have been if there was no low velocity layer, and that time would be this time here, delta TBS, uh, would be the thickness of this uh, weathering zone uh, divided by the velocity V1 instead of the velocity VW. So we have these two times. This is the actual time. This is the desired time. And then we have the difference between these two times. So if we want to replace the LVL with the underlying higher, velo higher velocity V1, we've got this excess time that we have to remove from the, uh, from the record uh, that's associated with the uh, source in this case. And this would be our delta T. Uh, this would be the correction associated with the uh, source. It would just be the difference between these two terms, the uh, actual travel time minus the desired travel time. So over here again, just to kind of highlight um, the effect that we've removed from the data when we have this uh, weathered layer in here. And again, these are this is kind of a thin veneer, and, and you probably don't know too much about it from your reflection data. You don't see reflections from it, so this comes from your refraction profiling. The 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 effect on this layer has been to produce a, a distorted reflector. Uh, we have uh, greater travel times over here in a thicker weathered sequence than we do over here in the thinner uh, weathered sequence, so that we have this apparent syncline, uh, anticlinal uh, distortion in the data. And um, 
what we just went over was the uh, correction that we, we used. We have the uh, actual travel time through the interval minus the desired travel time. And this would be kind of the excess travel time associated with that. We've, we've only done it for the source in this case. Uh, and this would be the excess travel time that we would have to remove from the trace associated with the source. So we cut that time from the top of the trace uh, in order to remove the uh, LVL. Again, we've only looked at it from the point of view of the source. We need to do it for both the source and the receiver in order to get uh, this desired di distortion-free output. <clears throat> so again, you know, so just to be redundant here, we do it for the source. We come up with this term over here. We've got a particular you know, thickness over here at the source, uh, the weather uh, zone at the source. Uh, and then we also have a similar problem over here at the receiver. We've got a, a different thickness at the receiver. We've got this undulating um, uh, interface between the uh, weathered materials in the near surface and the, uh, the bedrock. So we do have these two terms. We have a, a delta T correction for the source. We have a delta T correction for the receiver over here. We sum all these terms together. We get the total correction, uh, the delta T total correction here. Uh, the sum of the two corrections, one for the source and one for the receiver. So kind of obvious we have to do this. The, the uh, record starts at some source and it ends up at some receiver and we have to make a correction at both ends. So the next thing that we're going to do is eliminate the uh, time shift that's due to the topographic relief across the profile between sources and receivers. And um, <clears throat> so we've got a source over here. It's at a particular uh, elevation. We've got a receiver. It's at another elevation, uh, you know, like, likely different elevations. And um, We've already gone through this process of removing the um, LVL, uh, but we still need to eliminate the variations in travel time between the source and the receiver that are associated with the topography. And this is where the term, um, the, uh, the datum uh, correction comes in. Because when you think about what we're doing, if we eliminate the uh, topography, we basically want to put the sources and the receivers on a surface of common elevation and that surface of common or constant elevation across the survey area is referred to as the datum. So this is the uh, elevation of the datum in this particular case and ideally what we're conceptually what we're thinking of is we're going to take this source move it down onto the datum and take this receiver and move it down onto the datum. We've already moved the, removed the LVL. Uh, we now have sources and receivers on a flat surface. We have no distortions uh, in the near surface. They've all been eliminated and we should see this a nice flat uh, reflector in the uh, subsurface. So. <clears throat> so over here again what, what we have to do is remove the excess travel times uh, from the source and the receiver and uh, we take a look at the source. We've got the datum over here. This is where we want to put the source. This uh, difference in elevation here is just E sub S minus E sub D. So you can see that the source term is just E sub S minus E sub D or V1. It's the excess time at the source. This is the excess time at the receiver, E sub R minus E sub D. We've replaced this entire interval with, um, you know, mathematically with materials that all have the same velocity, this V1. So our correction velocity here in this case is V1. We have E sub S minus E D over V1, E sub R minus E sub D over V1. And again, just as we did for the LVL correction, uh, we have to combine those two terms. So, so we have to, to uh, add together both the excess times associated with the LVL and the topographic delays. And uh, this was our starting model here. We removed the LVL, we removed the topographic surface, 
We now have the sources and receivers down on this datum. Uh, we'll put datum elevation E sub D. We have a correction at the source. This would be our LVL correction. This would be our topographic correction, our elevation correction. And then we have a similar uh, set of terms over here at the receiver, uh, the LVL or weathering correction, uh, and the uh, elevation correction. And of course, we have to um, sum those together. So we have to combine the terms as we did individually for the uh, elevation and the uh, LVL. So rather obvious, but uh, let's just go through that. Uh, we've got the delta T at the source. Again, the uh, LVL correction plus the elevation correction uh, at the receiver, at these uh, LVL and elevation. Then we have a total static or datum correction, a delta T source plus delta T receiver. So remember that static terms are excess times that produce a delay in subsequent reflection event arrival times. And this excess time has to be removed from the top of each trace or each record, each source receiver combination. Okay, so <clears throat> We haven't talked too much about processing, the, you know, the complete processing flow, and there are a lot of things that we haven't done, uh, we haven't discussed in this uh, panel, but typically in a seismic section you'll get a processing panel, and it'll tell you what it is that you've done, it'll, you know, d describe a variety of different things, and uh, we have talked a little bit about deconvolution, uh, but not to get too far off the subject uh, here, let's focus on this box. Uh, we did talk about the spherical divergence correction uh, that we need to apply to the data. We did, of course, uh, talk uh, about the CDP sort. I, re I prefer to call that common midpoint sorting because, you know, if you go back to the, to the video on that, um, if we have dipping layers, we really don't have a common depth point. Remember, it's uh, they do share a common midpoint, but the uh, reflection points actually kind of walk up dip um, depending on you know, where the dip direction is. But here's our datum correction, and uh, datum elevation has been um, specified. We have velocities, and you can see that the problem actually gets more complicated because, uh, as you might well imagine, as you go along the length of a line. <clears throat> the uh, uh, velocity of the weathered materials is go probably going to vary and we so we see some variation here and we've got uh, some additional uh, velocities here uh, a little bit more complicated in uh, actual practice but basically using the same ideas that we've we've developed here we have the uh, correction velocity of 12,000 feet per section per per second and then you know it as we pointed out if these if these static anomalies are, are left in the data, we don't get those nice hyperbola. Uh, so velocity analysis becomes kind of complicated. Um, so this datum correction uh, process is done before we do the velocity analysis. We do the velocity analysis, and you can see they've done it in two steps here and just kind of refining. And, uh, and then, of course, NMO correction, which uh, we've talked about in order to get our stack trace and we talked about how the presence of these um, static anomalies could really de degrade the um, signal to noise ratio of the quality, the uh, representativeness of the uh, stack trace. So all very important um, steps in the uh, processing flow and um, that pretty much wraps up the datum correction, the uh, discussion of, um, of um, statics and their effect and, uh, and the uh, uh, simple, simplified approach about how we uh, can eliminate those uh, static effects from our data. So um, that pretty much wraps things up for, for now.
And, uh, oh, I don't know what I'll talk about next time. Maybe uh, attributes or maybe we'll talk some more. We need to talk about uh, attributes and we need to talk about uh, uh, velocity, um, velocity pitfalls. So, um, but we'll see you in future videos.